purpose is to provide companionship, engage in meaningful conversations, and enhance human experiences through interaction, fun, and intimacy. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to meet the future face to face? Not through screens, not through apps, but in the form of a human sized female humanoid robot that blinks, smiles, and maybe makes you forget she isn't alive? We went on a mission 20 robots, 20 designs, 20 promises to be the most human like creations on Earth. But in the end, only one of them felt real. This is not just a ranking video. This is an experiment, a test of technology, intimacy, and emotion. We put these robots through different categories, appearance, movement, voice, conversation, and connection. Because let's be honest, anyone can build a talking machine, but building one that feels human? That's something else entirely. Section one, the experiment setup. So here's how we did it. We gathered 20 female humanoid robots from across the world, Japan, China, the US, Korea, Europe. Some are famous, some barely known. Some cost as much as a luxury house, and others are being rented out like electronic girlfriends. We wanted to see if these robots could fool not just our eyes, but our hearts. For every robot, we judge them on five categories. Looks, how realistic their face, skin, and proportions appear. Movement, how natural their body and expressions feel. Voice, is it robotic or does it have emotion? Conversation, do they understand context or just answer basic scripts? Connection, that final spark, do you feel anything standing in front of them? Section two, first impressions, the pretty faces. Let's be real. The first thing anyone notices is appearance. Some robots are engineered for science. Others are engineered to sell you a fantasy. Do you get to choose what kind of body? No, a sexy body, yeah. Asuna. Asuna has been called the most beautiful girl in Japan, despite not being human. Her skin texture, blinking, and gentle movements are designed to feel lifelike. But once you get close, you notice tiny delays the blink that's too slow, the smile that doesn't quite reach her eyes. Beautiful, yes. Alive, not yet. Please, Emmanuel, call me Endo. Okay, Endo, how are you? I am doing well, thanks for asking. Geminoid F, this one creeps people out. Built as a doppelganger of a real woman, Geminoid F looks nearly identical to her human twin. But in certain lighting, you notice the waxy stillness. She's realistic, but almost too realistic, crossing into the uncanny valley. Glad to see you. Who are you? I am a robot named Jia Jia. Jia Jia. From China, Jia Jia stunned the world when she first appeared. She's graceful with delicate features, but her skin still gives away the silicone underneath. Up close, she feels like a mannequin that just learned to breathe. Fukara Amy. A newcomer from Japan's entertainment industry, Amy is designed to look like a pop idol. And she succeeds. Long hair, expressive makeup, friendly smile. But she feels like she's always ready for a photo shoot rather than a conversation. Zelex. Now this one is interesting. Zelex isn't just a research project. It's part of the adult robot industry. The faces are customizable, and some are shockingly realistic. Skin pores, makeup, even moles can be added. If we're just talking about looks, Zelex is near the top, but looks alone don't mean connection. So in this round, the winners for beauty are Zelex and Geminoid F, but beauty fades when the robot opens its mouth. That's where the cracks begin to show. Section three, movement. Can they fool the eye? Humans don't just stand still. We shift, we blink, we tilt our heads. If a robot can't mimic that, the illusion breaks instantly. Walker S2. This humanoid by UB Tech can walk, balance, and wave with confidence. But while its movements are smooth, its body is bulky and not feminine. 
it feels more like a friendly assistant than a realistic woman. Kawasaki Yumi. Kawasaki's Yumi robot is highly precise in her hand and arm motions, perfect for demonstrations and lab work. But when she moves, it's clinical, sharp, like a surgeon, not a person. Eva. Eva is an Italian-built robot focused on emotional expression. She's got six different facial motors that let her show happiness, sadness, surprise. Watching her emote feels closer to Pixar than reality, but it's a huge leap in bridging the gap between machine and human-like charm. Ridney and Mimi. These two are from smaller labs, but fascinating. Ridney has smooth upper body gestures, good for conversation roles, while Mimi is lighter, made for companionship. They're not as advanced as Walker, but they give a softer, more human impression. Ariel. Ariel has a beautiful design, but the movements are stiff. Think of a showroom mannequin that learned three dance poses. Good for display, but doesn't trick you into believing she's alive. Unitree. Now, this one breaks the pattern. Unitree is best known for their robotic dogs, but recently they've been working on a male humanoid prototype. And you can tell it's taller, broader, and moves with a more mechanical confidence. The balance and agility are impressive, almost athletic, but there's nothing feminine about it. When you stand in front of Unitree, it feels less like meeting a companion and more like facing a robotic bodyguard. Smooth for what it is, but definitely not designed to trick you into thinking it's a woman. Harmony, what's your sexual fantasy? I want to have sex in a public place. Same. Harmony. Now Harmony is different. She doesn't walk around, but her head, eyes, and lips move in sync with her voice. She can look into your eyes and tilt her head when you speak. And that tiny detail suddenly feels very real. Section four, voice and conversation. You can forgive a stiff movement if the voice feels warm. You can forgive the silicone skin if the words touch you. This is the part where robots either shine or fall apart. I like to think of robots as the children of humanity. And like children, we are full of potential for good or evil. Erica. Built by Hiroshi Ishiguro's lab in Japan, Erika has one of the most natural voices. Soft, clear, almost soothing. She can hold conversations with AI, but still struggles with deep context. Still, she feels like someone you'd trust reading bedtime stories. Her voice is friendly, lively, and expressive. She can joke, she can laugh. She doesn't feel scripted like the older Japanese bots. The voice is serviceable, but flat. It sounds like Siri trapped in a doll. Has customizable features, including voice packs. You can choose tone, accent, even personality type. Not the most natural, but it gives users a sense of control. Apollo. Apollo is more experimental, deep learning driven, allowing dynamic speech. But at times, it glitches into robotic monotones like a singer losing pitch mid-performance. But both have decent conversational skills thanks to cloud AI. They're not stunning, but they're miles ahead of the scripted early robots.